Davey here. Good morning, Beachside. It's Rob Davey here, one of the uh, leaders at uh, Beachside. And um, I am here to, I guess, start the countdown for our uh, 10 o'clock live outdoor service today. Uh, very exciting. I'm standing here at the end of the um, Talabudra rock wall, and I'm hoping that today we're going to run into a whole bunch of Beachsiders along the way. Um, if you were worried about the weather, I can assure you it is pretty darn good down here. Plenty of punters out and about, so feel free to come down. I've just, uh, I've just ridden the course and there's still plenty of uh, room uh, for anybody who wants to come down who is still thinking about it. So uh, we'd love to have you there. Just remember, if you do come down this morning, uh, keep it to 10 or less. So. Uh, might be a little bit late to uh, ring a few people up, but certainly if you come down, you might be able to find a cluster of beach charters if you uh, haven't already prearranged something. So it is a nice day. The weather has held off. Um, so, yeah, come on down. It's beautiful. I'll try and do a little bit of a 360 turn so you get a bit of a surf check, actually. Or actually I might move it that way. Okay, that's kind of not doing justice to it as a... A few nice little ones coming in earlier. I'm going to get my hand out of the road. Ooh. Um, I say that this is a countdown till the uh, 10 o'clock start, but if I'm completely honest, I don't have a watch. Uh, it stopped this week and I'm getting it repaired. So um, a little bit of guesswork today as for the timing. Uh, actually, can someone, are you guys able to message me at all or someone let me know the time? I don't know if that works or not. I can't see anybody. Hmm. Actually, the other great thing is that I have uh, put my phone on to do not disturb. So uh, that's good so we don't get too many notifications in the middle of the broadcast. But on the downside is if someone's trying to message me now to say that it's not working at all, uh, I'm not getting that message. <laughs> you see we've got 14 people online, so that's not that many really, but you might be in groups. So that's maybe not so bad. So just so you know, guys, what we're doing today, once a month, we always like to have an outdoor service, and uh, we got a little bit cocky. Uh, we thought Easter kind of worked okay, having um, uh, a sort of a roving mic on the bike. So we thought we'd try it again today. Except the only difference is there's about one million more people on the path. So for those of you that were quietly hoping for a bike crash or some other um, accident on the way, the odds are much more in your favour of something to laugh at this morning. Um, but we do have a number of beachsiders who are along the path who are um, going to be contributing to this morning service, which is going to be great. Uh, and I'm also hoping that we're going to meet a number of other uh, beachsiders who are just coming out for a nice day and, and hopefully uh, you can give us a wave along the way. Not going to lie, my arm is getting quite sore holding this up. I think um, maybe to be more proficient at selfies in Facebook Live, you probably should spend some time working your shoulders. Noted for next time. Not even try the cheeky hand swap. No, nope, that's not going to work. Uh, the other thing, guys, if you see me coming past, for those of you that are already down here and uh, you're watching on live, waiting for me to come riding through. Uh, if the camera is mounted on the bike, it's, it's kind of fixed like that, so I may not be able to take it off. So if the camera is mounted on the bike, come and jump in front of the bike, and I'll do my best to get the bike in front of you and say a quick hello. That would be wonderful. Um, and if you uh, see me carrying the camera, then that's not a problem. I'll, I'll come over to you. Uh, and I'll also take the earphones out of my ears and this will be our, uh, our microphone if I, if I try and interview you at all. So that'd be good. Um, I think we must be pretty close to 10 o'clock. Uh, so we might, might get underway. So first port of call is we are, actually this is a stitch up if ever you've heard of one. Susie's, last time we did one of these, um, I was catching up with the Numriches, the Numrich, Numriches. And this time our first meeting is the Heineckers, Heineckers, Henningers, and this is the problem. I'm, I'm just going to get the, the name wrong, but that will be the first thing we'll try and solve as we catch up with them is the appropriate pronunciation for the Heno's names. So without further ado, I'm going to swap this camera around 
and let's try and get out there and all right so here we go it is a beautiful day hoping it's pretty close to 10 o'clock nice offshore look at that beautiful beautiful oh look at that thing wasted oh anyway oh a little spit okay here we go so fingers crossed we are going to run into the hennos along here somewhere thanks everybody for coming on board today uh, it is intended to be a one hour service uh, but yeah not having a not having a watch on today may not help okay i thought i might see them by now so i might just grab my noble steed i might just walk it down So yeah guys, just a reminder, I know we're half on about this, but it is important that if you are going to meet us along the path today, and there's heaps of room still up at the park in front of um, Merlong Street or Parade or Crescent, um, there we go, we're getting the wave. So yeah, just make sure that you keep your group under 10, that'd be great, um, and we'll um, hopefully see you along there pretty soon. All right. No, really looking forward to mounting the camera in the bike. This is not fun holding this thing up. All right, how are we doing, guys? I'll try and get a little bit closer. Thanks for making me walk all this way. I really appreciate that. Uh, all right, so that's probably going to fall over. Oh. Yep, success. All right, so who have we got here? Give us a big wave. Okay, so the first question that we want to solve for everybody is the correct pronunciation of your last name. Yeah, we just heard that was coming. But, yeah. Uh, I guess that's up, up for debate. I say Heininger, they say Henninger. I say Heininger. Or... Okay, so well, that's... we say the Hennos. The Hennos, so really right. that doesn't help at all. So. <laughs> all right, so we'll just, just pass this one around as we, as we uh, use that as our roving mic. Okay. Um, okay, so you guys so are going to lead us in a little it? bit of a... Yeah, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have put those in if I were you. So, each to their own. All right, can we get a quick name call, roll call? Who's, who have we got? Craig. Tara. Queenie. Okay. Emily. Okay, you need to be louder than that. Let's get the mic in closer. Jamie. Cassie. Are we Grace. Back? Emily. Emily, terrific. All right, now you guys are going to lead us in a little bit of a prayer to get the service underway this morning. There we are, there we are. It's a good spot here. We can see quite a bit of the Gold Coast, so I'll just do a little bit of a pan. Pan that way, all right. Beautiful. And uh, just on the other side of that headland there, we do have the surface paradise. I described it nicely too. All right, okay. You want to take us away, guys? Will do. All right. Well, thank you, Lord, firstly, that we can meet together today. I just thank you for the chance of... I guess be, be able to come out of a bit of quarantine as well, Lord, and just the, the new freedom that we have in that as well, Lord. And we want to thank you for the chance to come together with friends and family as well. And we just want to pray for your blessing over today. Pray for a blessing over our country, especially as we do come into this next stage of lifting restrictions and so forth. And just for our church community, clearly as well, Lord, just for, for jobs, Lord, just for people's well-being as well. And just for a real blessing over today's service as well. I just pray for a blessing over the service and everyone listening. Lord, I pray that you open our hearts to hear from you. Amen. 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 All right. Now, if someone would be kind enough to help me get the bike up, that would be great. I'm going to try and get these earphones back in. All right, wonderful, guys. Thank you so much. No Look at this. Hey, that's good service. Oh, no. So when the, we've gone over, we've also locked over the camera. So we'll, we'll try and get this. may not be super level, guys, but... A little bit of trial and error. The old bike crash wasn't helpful. All right. Let's try see how level that looks. You know what? Good enough. Okay. We're off and rolling. Okay, see you guys. Ta-da. Oh, kickstand already off to a great start. Okay, so it might be a little bit bumpy here, guys, but we're coming on to a better path. So, uh, so yeah, today is our outdoor service. I might use this little gap here to give a little bit of a, uh, uh, an announcement for a couple of things. Uh, the first one is that coming up next week, 
Uh, we have our beach side as a broad service, um, which is going to be pretty cool. And what that is, is a number of beach siders uh, around the country and indeed around the world are, are offering a video part. Uh, we're continuing with our Empowered for Mission series out of Axe, but uh, all the different contributors will be beach siders from... Oh, old mate there, not really watching. <laughs> um, yeah, so beach siders from around the country and, and elsewhere in the world. So that'll be really, really exciting. Um, and then another really big one, and this is our the big bang coming back after uh, restrictions have lifted and we're able to congregate in groups of 20. And that is on the 14th of June. All right, I might give this bell a run and... Oh, excuse moi. So on the 14th of June, we're coming back together for a uh, a Holy Spirit Day. It's not a Holy Spirit weekend, but um, actually I might have given that the wrong title. All right, shoot through here. Thank you. Jeez, this bell's paying for itself. All right. Okay, yeah, and that one's going to be really, really great. We're really looking forward to that. Uh, what a great way to come back together. We are going to be congregating in people's homes. Um, with maximum number of 20, so probably you know 10 or a few adults and then uh, kids on top of that. And so if you haven't RSVP'd for that, we would love every beach charter to be a part of that. Um, so I'll come back to that later, but that one, if you haven't RSVP'd, please do so. 50, um, hello at beachsidechurch.com.au. Uh, so you can tell Susie, and I'll tell you a bit more about that later, because right now we're going to go and say hello to... Gee, where am I going to park this bike? All right, how about over here? So we've just caught up with somewhere near here. We should be coming across Mar Marcos. Marcos. This is a good sign. <laughs> right, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> hey, guys. So we've got the, the Edies and a few. Oh, Chad and Justine. We've got Geordie. What, it was, so what's your name? Parkinson. Parkinson. Nice to meet you guys. Hello. All right. Now, you keep your distance. You guys have to stay down there. You're not allowed to come up here and mosh or anything. All right. So what are we doing here, guys? We're going to worship. Okay. So I'm going to try and get this microphone in nice and close to you guys. So don't mind me. It's just like a camera crew. All right. Take us away. Good morning, everyone. We're going to worship the Lord here. You are more than welcome to join us from wherever you are. And that's the beauty about God. He can be everywhere. So let's do it. That, that light behind is not...
Oh, oh, reggae. Oh, oh, reggae. oh, oh we're doing reggae. that one. Well done guys, thank you so much. We will let you hang out here and continue to serenade the other punters on the beach. All right guys, give us a, give us a wave all the way through. Then Namba, hello, hello. Hello Rob. We'd love to stop for a longer chat, but we've got to <laughs> keep on going. Keep Show on must moving. roll on. All right, see you guys. See, see you guys. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Good to be here. All right. All right. Here we go, okay. Next stop, something which I'm pretty confident as always is a highlight of this service, and that is our Grom section coming up. So, let's just see how level that is. Um, oh, it'll do, it'll do. Yeah, so guys, what I was talking about just before we came up to a nice little worship team was the uh, Holy Spirit gathering we've got coming up on the 14th of June. So if you didn't before, <laughs> there's a dog ripping one out. So good. Um, 
It's 14th of June. It's, think of it a little bit like the tables of eight or guess who's coming to dinner that we've done over the last few years down at uh, Evans Head Campground. Uh, so basically, we're going to get everybody to be gathering in, in somebody's house um, where we will be having a meal. They'll either be brunch or lunch. Uh, we'll be watching some videos. Um, yeah, so pretty chilled and then having an opportunity to process what's in those videos and pray for one another. Um, as you know, as we've been working our way through the, uh, the book of Acts and this, this notion of being empowered for mission and filled with the Holy Spirit. So uh, that, that will be a focal point of this gathering. Uh, and what a wonderful way to celebrate our return to oh, one step closer, I suppose, to normality. Uh, so yeah, so if you'd like to be a part of that, hello at beachsidechurch.com.au, send Susie an email. Um, and also, I just want to have a quick shout out. I think we've had seven hosts already who have put their hand up to say, yep, they can take on 20 people in their place. So uh, thank you to you guys. If you uh, are able to host and you um, haven't put your name down or would like to consider that, please, again, contact Susie. Hello at beachsidechurch.com.au. Um, and the other thing I was going to quickly mention too is that if you... You know, have a venue or a home or a backyard or something that could be suitable for hosting but you're sort of thinking to yourself oh man I'm not sure if I'd be all that excited about leading oops sorry I just had a notification <laughs> Facebook just told me I've been on for 25 minutes today so there we go um, so if you're not all that excited about leading um, hello hello Kilo, g'day g'day hello. <laughs> um, yeah, not excited about leading it, but you are happy to host, that's perfect. Just uh, let us know, because uh, we do have people that are happy to lead that don't have a venue available to them. So, all right, I'm going to park it up right here. So that's the 14th of June. Get on board, everybody. Um, that's the week after our Beachside as a broad service, which is next weekend. Now, um, I might just park this thing here. So we are now on the other side of the Gold Coast Highway. And I note that we have a number of beach charters down here. Actually, that's a bad place to park the bike. It's gonna take me a while to get back to that. But anyway, let's go. All right. Who do we have here? I see Joe. All right. Hey guys, how are we doing? Hi, we're good. So names for the Facebook world, who we got? Kate. Kate. And Joe. All right, now what are we doing today? And hi, this is for the God's Grommets and I know adults enjoy it as well. So come on down to the to the shore, and, and we'll tell you our favourite Bible story. Oh, ah, oh. hey, we're going next level with the props this time, I see. Oh, we good are, thing I'm we wearing my all-terrain pluggers today. <laughs> All right, so it's Grums. It's our favourite Bible story. Oh, 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 nearly <laughs> walked right through that. Favourite Bible story. <laughs> nice. All right. So our favourite Bible story is from Luke chapter 5 and it's got to do with fish so let's come and see what's happening. All right. <laughs> okay Kate, you start. So who's our narrator today? Both Kate, Kate and oh, I. You guys are doing it together. All right. All right. Yeah. You talk to the mic and I'll try and get the scenery. All right. One day, Jesus was standing by the lake of Gethsemane with the, with the people of crowds standing around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats that were left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, and asked him to put out from shore a little. Oh, then he Simon, sat. Simon, oh. can you please put out the boat to throw him to the, out of the shore Send it, Simon. Off you go, Simon. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. Be ready, because the kingdom of heaven is near. Take from your sins. <laughs> When he had finished, he got out of the boat and he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Put 
Thanks, Lois. And Simon answered, Master. Master. We've worked hard all night. We've worked hard all night. And haven't caught anything. And haven't caught anything. But because you say so. But because we say, you say so. I will let down the nets. I will let down the nets. So the fishermen went out into the boat to let down their nets. <laughs> When they had done so, amazingly, <laughs> they started to catch a large number of fish and their nets began to break. <laughs> so they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full that the boats began to sink. <laughs> Some big fish there. Yeah. It should be a fisher of men. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> they, pulled the, they pulled the boat back in. Simon. When Simon saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. Go away from me, Lord. For I am a sinful man. For I am a sinful man. For he and all the other companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. From now on, you'll catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. <laughs> so our favourite Bible story, come on Kate, is from Luke chapter 5, the, when the ordinary fishermen were out catching you know they followed Jesus commands and they caught a big mound of fish but really Jesus was calling them to follow him and he asked them and he actually then said didn't he that you will be um, a, a fisherman of catching men so they followed him and left everything so Grums Jesus asked us to follow him and to share God's love with all of those around us so in talk to your families about being fishers of men and um, sharing God's love. Thanks, Rob. Good work, guys. Thank you very much. See you later. Right, wonderful work, team. That's great. You guys going to stick around here by the water for a little while? And... Ah, yes. Nice. Okay. All right. I'll jump on the treadley. See you guys later. Wonderful. <laughs> Oops. Nearly walked through the, the intro again. How good have those grommet sections been, hey? Very good. All right. Okay, so if you're one of the beach siders waiting along Merlong Crescent, I'm pretty sure we're going to be coming up to you fairly soon. Uh, right. Next person we are going to meet is none other, I believe, than Scotty Askin, who is going to do a Bible reading for us. I haven't seen Scotty for ages with all of the COVID restrictions. I haven't been on Facebook much lately either, so I'm not sure he's presumably in a cast because he normally is. But I um, guess we'll wait and see. Oh, all right. Here we go. So, guys, just a reminder too that if you are, oh, I don't think that's very straight, but anyway. Hey, oh, we're we'll trying to get the camera onto you guys. Give us a wave. All right, okay. See you shortly. Oh, hello. Hello. All right. So yeah, if you do see me, give me a yell out and I'll uh, try and come over and say hello. Uh, and if the, uh, if the camera is fixed on the bike as it is now, then uh, try and jump in front. That'll make it a little bit easier. 
All right, let's give the old fella a run through here. Thank you. Epic. Morning. All right, there we go. I can see Scotty giving us a big wave over there. Looking nice and relaxed. Oh, that's so good. Morning. All right. Hey, look at that. No, no cast, no wheelchairs. Scotty's in good shape. Here's Millie. All right, how are we going, guys? All right. <laughs> going on a bike ride. All right, I'll just take this out, guys. Someone's throwing things at me. This is helpful. Where was you over at? How you going, Ezzy? Give us a big wave, Millie. Ooh, now, we're, we must be pretty close to your house, aren't we? Where else do you guys live? Ah, right oh, in that tree. Do you live in this tree here? Does it, how does it go in the bad weather? All right, hello, how you doing? Okay, g'day Suze, good one down here. All right, where's the fun in that? We only go to the park with it. Yeah, don't blame you. All right, so Scotty, I believe you're gonna do a Bible reading for us this morning. All right, I'm gonna bring the mic over to make it a little bit easier. You can even hold that one if you like. All right. How's that? Is that working okay? Perfect. I wouldn't have a clue. It'd be right. better than not working the whole time, I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh no, I can saw you on the thing before, that's working, that's good. <laughs> Alright, so this morning's reading comes from Acts 2, uh, verses 1 to 13. And it's the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. Um, so when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, a couple other places, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. <clears throat> we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine to drink. Here endeth the reading. Terrific, thank you, Scotty. Now, could I trouble you for one other, can you tell me what the time is? The time is 10.30 on the dot. 10.30 on the dot. I'm right on time. You are, it's incredible. <laughs> Possibly for the first time. This is a All right. Thing. I reckon I might have time to wander down here rather than take the bike. Can you be a sport and maybe just chuck my noble steed up next to a fence or something so it looks semi-secure <laughs> that'd be terrific all right thanks scotty right guys i'm gonna i'm gonna wander through for this part do you want to just give us a yell hello hello good to see you welcome to our outdoor service here we are round two bonnie good morning all right how's it going guys Good to see we're going to freestyle through here. No, that was meant to be an elbow, Pele. What's going on, guys? So, oh, yeah, all right, good yeah. to see you. No, we don't shake hands around here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Oh, actually, what did you have? You may be here. Yeah, yeah, that's a great plan. All right, perfect. Oh, no, no, no plate, just that'll do. Perfect. Unreal. Have a go at that. That's warm, too. Who made that? Susie. Susie, you're a machine. All right. Boom. All right, I'm just not going to talk for a moment here for obvious reasons. Oh, holy dooly. That's good. Mm. I promise I don't have a <laughs> spare hand to get all the cream that's now on my face off. Mmm. Wow.
What a powerful reading, guys. From Scott. That's what I love about this book of Acts. It's like, this is the chapter of the Bible that we're in, guys. We're from Acts 29 forward. Spirit's been poured out on all flesh. Empowered for mission. This is our time. So, here we go. How are we going? Well, hold on. I hope we've got two distinct groups here. One, two, three, four, five. All right. How are we, guys? Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Hey, Rob. How we go? Big Ev, how are you, mate? Good. All right. Moving through. Good to see you. Here's a motley-looking crew. Hey. How are we, guys? Good, buddy. Good. Yeah, nice. Good day, good day. Good day, good day. <laughs> have you done a selfie? No. Well, oh, no, I, I started with a pretty big selfie. Well, I've probably got cream all over on my face. Have a, have a look at who's filming um, you. <laughs> absolutely divine. Okay, beautiful. All right, good on you, Grant. All right, Grant, you would have a terrible joke for us, actually. You always do. I'm going to put you on the spot. Terrible, a terrible dad joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? Noah. Noah who? Noah, good place to eat. Oh, my dear. <laughs> It just doesn't get any better. All right, hey guys. Hey. How are we? Good morning. You guys have got a good little feet here. Yeah, it's a little, yeah. little bit too healthy. Yeah, so. You've got to do this, mate. It's no. a pound of uh. noggin. <laughs> See ya. Perfect, perfect. G'day, guys. Hi. Well, well, that's a mighty setup you've got here. Uh, hey, okay. I don't know if there's anyone else. Oh, here we are. Hey, you're a little camera junkie. You're just following me around, aren't you? So. All right, good to see you, girls. All right. Now, this is the part where I may regret not having the bike. Oh, there we go. Jake and Steph down there. Who are we, Jake? Guys, if you need... Uh, I don't know how many people we've got watching this right now, Jake, but I'll give it the plug for the new business. Online uh, online physio services now. Yeah, my place physio. My place physio, what, .com? Dot A U, hey, good. Hope it goes well, man. Good to see you. G'day, Steph. All right. Not gonna lie, shoulder is pretty sore. Could use an online physio, JK. Hey? Another plug. Just trying to think if there's any other announcements I needed to make sure I made. I think the big ones are, yeah, Beachside. Beach Hide is abroad next weekend, um, so that's just watching from home. Look, look guys, it's so good that, um, I hope you guys are enjoying this, that we are able to now gather again uh, in small groups. Now, they are quite small groups right now, obviously. Um, you can invite five people around to your home, but soon that's going to be going up to 20. But I, I hope everybody is taking advantage of the, um, yeah, the fact that we can have five around now. Big shout out to... Yeah, all of our small group leaders, I think, have done a terrific job in complex times trying to stay connected, sending messages, connecting over, you know, awkward online platforms like Hangouts and Meet and uh, Zoom and platforms we weren't all that familiar with. But I think you've done a wonderful job, guys. Um, if you're not connected with a small group, I encourage you to. You're missing out. Um, really dynamic incubators for, for growth, for discipleship, for accountability, for you know, growing in your gifts, it's, it's wonderful. So, yeah, particularly with the series that we're going through now, Empowered for Mission and, um, you know, getting empowered and growing and released and out into the world for doing some head kicking for the kingdom. It's unreal. So get yourself into a small group. Again, big thanks to those guys who have also put their hands up to say they're happy to, to host a, uh, a larger gathering when we have our Holy Spirit Sunday coming up on the 14th of June. Again, we're really hoping every single beach rider could be a part of that. Hold on. Who's this? Hey. How are you, Gav? How you going? What's going on down here? Well, Hold on. I'm going to kick off the pluggers this time. Bit of fishing going on. Oh, hey, good to see you, mate. We can't hear you on our phone. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that... Too many boats. Too oh, many fishing. Too but, much fishing. but there is audio coming through, hopefully. Yeah, no, so. Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah, we can't hear you. Oh, wonderful. So, Mia. Hey, Mia. Hello. How you doing? Hello. You having much luck fishing? Oh, he's got a little cast net there, dear. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah. Jar jars up here. Huh? Wow. <laughs> nice work. All right, we're going to keep wandering, Gav. Nice to see everyone. Okay, see you, mate. Live in real. <laughs> Hopefully. Keep going, mate. You can bring in jaws, I reckon. 
<laughs> See ya, bud. All right. Okay. There was some prospect we were going to be doing this on a skateboard, but I think it's for the best that that not happen. Well, best for me, maybe not for you guys. Could be entertaining viewing. Um, all right. Now, guys, we're coming up to the finale of our service at this point, and that is uh, Luke Gray is going to continue with our series Empowered Permission and preaching from that passage, which uh, Scott just read out. Um, oh, there he is right over there. Beautiful. I am looking forward to sitting down and not holding this phone up. Okay, I'm going to pause momentarily because I need to get the rest of this sticky bun into my mouth. Mmm. Oh, yeah. It's so good. It's got like pecans or something on the top. Oh, maybe they're walnuts or... Boom, get in there. <laughs> Mm. Mr. Gray, how are you, mate? You going to deliver the word for us this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Just while I think of it, I'm going to sit down because I'm tired. By the way. That's all right. It's their their problem, not mine. Um, your wife, Lee. Have I got it correct that it's her birthday today? It is her birthday. You want to give a big old shout out? Yeah, big shout out to. The old girl? Oh, I was going to say, do you want to declare your undying love and <laughs> yeah. the old girl? <laughs> All right, now I'm going to get this. Looks 20 though, it looks 20. Doesn't she? All right, okay. On the bright side, she may not have heard that because the microphone. Oh man, I've got this tangled. Do you know why he's got that tangled rod? Why is that? He's the only man I've ever seen that walks with a stack hat on. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Walking through with the. Okay, I'm going to undo this helmet and see if I can get this thing undone. Oh, geez, what's going on? Whatever you do, don't unplug it, because then we're in real trouble. All right, beautiful. Now, while I think of it, also doing shout-outs for birthdays. I'm pretty sure it's also Cherie Gallagher's today as well. So that's it good. Is, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to pass this over, or maybe just put it down over here, or you can hold it, whatever you prefer. Yep. And um, I'm just going to sit over here next to you. You're going to take us through a little passage. Now, do you want me to ask you questions, or I'm going to let you just rip into it? No, uh, you, you just go into it. Rip but, into um, it. I'd... Um, it's kind of an interesting passage that we just read out. It's probably the most influential passage in all of Scripture. Um, and uh, I don't know if anybody knows that's listening, but it's actually Pentecost Sunday today, um, which um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about Pentecost Sunday shortly. But, uh, I mean, have a, have a look out there, Rob. I think everybody can look out there. It's beautiful. You know, we... Uh, we sit in this uh, amazing place here on the Gold Coast, um, except there's these two kids in a tinny that keep going um, up and down. You'll probably see them shortly, and we've got the outlaw oh, in his, his boat. Disciples, was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a beautiful uh, place that we live. But reading that passage out of, out of Acts chapter 2, and I was thinking, well, what, what, what is the relevance um, for us uh, as we, as we read that passage and um, you know as I just said we, we look out here and it's so beautiful and um, you know the Gold Coast is a very beautiful place if you've travelled the world every time you come back to the Gold Coast you go there's, there's no place like here um, and it does from, from an aesthetic point of view it's, it's probably one of the most beautiful places on earth but once you start to scratch that surface um, things change very quickly and um, you know, I don't know. I don't know where you're at today, or you know, people listening out there, where what's going going on in your life. But um, you know, when we scratch the, the surface of, of the glamorous Gold Coast, you know, uh, it, it's filled with a lot of stuff that isn't so nice. You know, we've got domestic violence. We've got um, there's a stabbing on the news every time you turn it on. We've got um, you know, broken relationships and. Um, you know, sickness and uh, now lots of job losses. There's there's um, loneliness and depression, mental illness. There's there's so many so many things that are the real Gold Coast. <laughs> Funnily enough, because it's to do with people, and life's about people. And um, this 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 passage 
is is so important because it's it's the power of God in mankind. It's it's the power. It's His gift um, to transform all that stuff I just talked about and to to make it new and and to clean it up. And and I don't know about you, but I I need that in my own life. And um, so that that's why it, it is so important. And and this passage it talks about a fresh start and, and creating things all new. And um, I just want to flick back to Acts chapter one first. Uh, in Acts chapter one, I don't know if you remember. If you remember uh, we've been speaking from there, and it, it talks about. It says this in Acts chapter one, verse eight. It says, "But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth." So, what what was that to be witnesses of? It was to be witnesses of of what we're talking about today about about Pentecost about the giving of the Holy Spirit, of this new covenant that God made with, with man through, through um, Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. And um, so that what, what we're to be witnesses of is the fact that in Jesus, if we, if we surrender our lives to Jesus, if we repent and turn from our own thinking, that he is going to make all things new, that he would change our lives, he would transform our hearts, and that we would have purpose and meaning, and that uh, we, he would give us a new spirit. And um, the, the relevance of today being Pentecost Sunday is that um, so Pentecost, it's celebrated 50 days after Easter. Um, it's a little bit different on the Jewish calendar. Um, but it, it, it represented a couple of things. It was all about a celebration of feasts or of the new harvest, and what they did is they actually... Um, people would come from all over, um, all over different nations of the world, and they'd all come to Jerusalem, and they would celebrate this Pentecost, and they would give of first fruits, and they would celebrate the first fruits of the harvest that was to come. And this, this is symbolic of that why why um, God chose to have this time to pour out His Spirit is because we, as the church, whether or those those people at that time. Um, those disciples, those people that were hearing the gospel for the first time, they were the first fruits of the harvest that God was going to do for his kingdom. And, and so that's the relevance for us today. And uh, so it was, it was no uh, coincidence that we had people of all different languages. And it was no coincidence that when the Holy Spirit came upon the, um, the disciples at that time with power, they started speaking in these other languages because God had a plan um, that was going to reach... The globe uh, with this this message of new hope and purpose and and change lives and um, that the, this this uh, this passage about Pentecost it, it it was a changing point in in world history mm. from from that time the whole of history has been transformed I'm going to read out a few things that, that the Holy Spirit uh, how when he's worked in the heart of man of what he's done down through history and it's actually um, pretty amazing how um, history has changed because of what the Holy Spirit's done. Um, firstly, there was even close to home to Jesus was his, his youngest brother James. Um, James was he, he didn't believe that Jesus was who he said he was until Jesus was put to death, and then and then he was um, Jesus was raised to life. And then after that, it's interesting that. Um, that uh, James actually became uh, the leader of the Jerusalem church and then he died as a martyr. Um, so something powerful happened in him that would cause him to die as a martyr for something that he originally didn't believe in. Um, there was uh, many disciples. I'm just going to read it here. The disciples, after they met the resurrected Christ, they were radically changed. Suddenly, they were willing to give their lives to tell Jesus' story to the world. Many were tortured, killed, um, and killed because they proclaimed Jesus was alive. And that's actually happening today. If you didn't know, 11 Christians are martyred or are put to death every day throughout the world for their faith. Um, there was Saul of Tarsus. He was the chief uh, persecutor of early Christians. He dragged people to prison. Uh, when they did not recant their faith, he was, partly, he was party to their execution, but he had a dramatic encounter with the risen Christ on his way to Damascus, and he was transformed uh, from Saul, the enemy of Christianity, to Paul, the main propagator of its message. He left his position of prestige in Jewish society to become a traveling missionary who experienced incredible suffering 
in order to share the love of Christ throughout the Roman Empire. And the fact that he went, went out and shared the love of Christ through the Roman Empire, the message of the gospel completely changed Rome. If you think of what happened in the Colosseums, where they were at sexually, um, with um, their sacrifices and things, the, the message of the gospel completely changed Rome. Um, the, the message of the gospel changed the Vikings. Um, it was, it was uh, the gospel, it was the Christian missionaries who started thousands of hospitals all over the world. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, we may not even have a hospital. It was, it was through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, that that happened. 120 of the top American universities, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, they were all started by Christians. The printing press, it was started by Christians to, to actually print the gospel message, to put the words of Jesus onto paper. Um, Christopher Columbus, he set off on a voyage. Um, he's one of the greatest explorers of all, of all time. And he set off on a, a voyage to discover the new world. And he was led by the Holy Spirit and by scriptures. Um, the arts, Shakespeare um, was influenced. Um, music, we've got Mozart and Bach and, and Handel. They're all influenced by Christ. Um, the abolition of slavery, we had um, William Wilberforce and Abraham Lincoln who were the main instigators. Um, we've got places like Red Cross, Compassion, World Vision, um, Salvation Army, YMCA, Uniting Church Care, Church of Christ Care, Blue Nurses. None of those organisations would exist without this act of Pentecost. There's a, a historian by the name of Philip Scharf and he says this, he describes the overwhelming influence which Jesus had on the subsequent history and cultures of the world. This Jesus of Nazareth, without money and arms, conquered more millions than Alexander, Caesar, Muhammad, and Napoleon. Without science, he shed more light on things human and divine than all philosophers and scholars combined. Without the eloquence of schools, he spoke such words of life as were never spoken before or since and produced effects which lie beyond the reach of orator or poet. Without writing in a single line, he set more pens in motion and furnished themes for more sermons, orations, discussions, learned volumes, works of art and songs of praise than the whole army of great men of ancient and of modern times. For three years, Jesus was a preacher. He didn't write a book. He didn't go to uni. He didn't have a family. No TV, no social media. He wasn't an insta... Um, influencer he never traveled and yet in three years of life transformed history and he's still transforming people today and communities nations and he's transformed my life and he's and he's transforming my life every day i'm not the person that i used to be god through his holy spirit through pouring it out at that time at pentecost and it's it's been shared and given all down through the generations to it got to me and it's changed my life, it's changed the life of my family, it's changing the lives of the people around me, um, and, and it's incredible. And, um, you know, he, he, he takes the broken and he, he makes it whole. And um, so, so, I mean, the, the question is, you know, what, what does this mean for you if you're watching on? You know, is, is, this, what, is this what Pentecost, is this what the Holy Spirit means for you? Is it, does it mean transformation? Does it mean a life change? Does it mean the opportunity to worship the creator of the universe. Um, you know, the, the Holy Spirit came at that time at Pentecost and it was like a rushing wind that filled this room. And I, I've never had the rushing wind experience because, because the Holy Spirit comes to people in different ways. Some people have radical transformations and radical experiences and, and others, they don't. Um, but it makes God no more less um, real than any other person's experience. Um, you know, I had a little uh, job at work. I'm in emergency services and I was at a bad motorbike accident the other week. And, um, uh, Rob doesn't like to talk about accidents. He's a bit accident prone himself. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, the guy was, was laying down. He had a couple of broken legs, broken pelvis, um, puncture wounds to the stomach, um, broken hand. Um, anyway, we were all around and, and the paramedics were working on him and, and uh, trying to stabilise him and so forth. And in the middle of that, along comes somebody I know who's a Christian and he knows the guy that's laying on the road. And the guy laying on the road's a Christian. 
and uh, uh, this this fella he walks in boldly, and he amongst all the paramedics he puts his hand on him, <coughs> and he and he starts to pray for him. And um, I thought to myself, what what inspires somebody to do that? And what inspires somebody to do that is is the Holy Spirit, and the and the change that. Uh, the Holy Spirit has had in that man's life, and the man on the light and that's laying on the road, his life, and they know that that God is is able to change lives, and uh, not only spiritually, not only um, you know inside our hearts and and our desires changing, but um, physically, you know, God is able to heal, and um, see, I mean, that spoke volumes to me in that situation that. Even from 2,000 years ago, it's affecting people today, and it's real. Um, and uh, so, you know, what possesses a man to do that? It's, it's Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the gift from God. And, you know, if you're watching today, you also may wish to encounter this God. And I, I don't know if you have or you haven't, um, but you might want to experience this transforming power in your own life. And um, Christ... Christ's desire is to enter any heart that is willing to invite him in. Um, so the answer to this world's problems, the answer to this beautiful Gold Coast problems, um, is Pentecost. It's, it's, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out on mankind. It's the only power that can, can reach the heart of man because every whether you want to look at what's happening in America with the racism or with abortions in the world or with wars or rumours of wars or what the things that are happening in domestic violence, anything. It's the heart of man is evil and it needs to be made new. It needs to be transformed. And this can only happen by being born again and by receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And, and if that's what you, you're crying out for today, then uh, you know, I want to tell you that God cares for you and... Um, that he may not come like a rushing wind, but he, he loves you so much. And, uh, you know, if you're watching today and you don't know Jesus, I, I want to pray with you um, right now. And, Lord, I just want to ask for every heart that's watching right now that if if um, we just want to invite you in, Jesus, when I invite that power of your Holy Spirit, we want a new heart, we want a new mind, we want new lives, lives that are made in your image that are full of love, and of beauty, of kindness and compassion, self-control. Um, we're, we're happy just to have you, Jesus. And so we ask you, and we just surrender and submit our life to you right now. And, and we just ask that in Jesus' name. And um, another little story, you know, God does care. Even this week, you know, I had a guy in our street a couple of doors down, nearly 90 years old, took his own life. And, you know, there's lots of questions you ask why. Anyway, this rattled my kids a little bit um, because of the nature of it. And uh, it rattled my, my son a bit. And uh, anyway, he, he works on phones as his job and he talks to people. Anyway, he rang a, a number. This is just after this happened and he was feeling pretty bad about the whole thing. And, and um, anyway, he rang this number and then he, he realised it, it wasn't the right person he was ringing. So he hung up. Anyway... A couple of minutes later, this person rings him back and starts talking to him. And the fellow on the other end says, oh, what's your name? And he says, Levi. He goes, oh, is that a Bible name? And is that for a reason? And he goes, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a, a Christian. He goes, oh, well, so am I. He goes, he goes, is there something happening at the moment that you'd like me to pray about? Mm. And, uh, and and my son shared that with the guy. And so the guy, you know, was able to pray for him and pray for our community and pray for the people in our street. And I just thought, you know, from a, from a missed phone call, God cares about the most intimate parts of our, of our lives and our relationships and, and uh, you know, he's in the business of transforming people's lives. And uh, for those of you that are watching that do know Christ, he's, he's called us to be salt and light. And uh, <clears throat> sometimes we, we push that Holy Spirit aside, we push him, you know, we push him out, we, we only want to take him and let him, and Rob's talked a little bit about this over the past few weeks and we only want him to fill certain parts of our lives and we want to hang on to areas and he's saying no he said I want all of you unless a man denies himself and takes up his cross and follows me he's not worthy to enter the kingdom of heaven 
And so the challenge is that we'd be salt and light, that we'd open up all the doors of our hearts. And uh, we'd allow Christ to fill us and to use us and to change us, to transform us, and that we would hold on to nothing in this world more than him. And so anyway, that's what I've got to share today. And just get into that passage and read over it a few more times. It's so powerful. And if you just look at what God's doing, what he has done, and what he's continuing to do, you know, we've got so much to be thankful for. And so God bless you today. Terrific. Thank you, Luke. Uh, all right, might just jump in here with you. So that's that's it for this morning, guys. Uh, thank you for very much for coming along this morning, and we do, um, yeah, just be praying for you guys and praying for each other that we would all be filled with God's powerful Holy Spirit. Uh, for those of you that don't know, that is literally the vision of Beachside to be a people who are so full of God's powerful Holy Spirit that we see transformation within ourselves, within Palm Beach, and within this wider community. So. Very excited about that. Pleased that you're engaging with us in the Sunday services. Hope that you're uh, wrestling with us in the scriptures and shooting through Acts and um, this idea of being empowered for mission and all those wonderful stories that Luke Luke shared, you know, as we read the, the book of the Acts and the exploits of the apostles. And this is all what's available to us as we as we yield to the work of God in our lives. And um, we should get excited about those, those stories but not believe that they're all for somebody else that we can be a part of all that that story and the great narrative that god's winding out in this on the gold coast so god bless you all have a wonderful sunday and uh look forward to seeing you next week for beachsiders abroad um and then the following week that's the big one we can come back together for groups of 20 and that's where we're going to be doing the brunch or lunch holy spirit saturday or sunday uh, sunday 14th of june don't forget to rsvp the later you do it it's a it's a nightmare for sue's trying to get everybody into a house um, so the sooner the better. And for those of you that have already done it, God bless you. You're a legend. And for the rest of you, jump on board. Okay, that's us. Have a great Sunday. See you later.